Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm reviewing Pass Cure by Phantom A Studios. Get your pills and your guns ready and let's get started. That's right folks, indie action thriller title Pass Cure has finally released. Releasing on Xbox One, PS4, and PC, Pass Cure puts you in the mind of former soldier and lab experimenting Ian, dealing with the harboring ghosts of his past that constantly haunt him every night, which alters his perception of reality and dreams and boarding him on the brink of insanity. Ian has been searching for answers that's been popping up in his dreams also. Who is the woman? What does these bluebirds mean? What has been done to me and who is the man with the beard? All these questions Ian is searching for get solved and more within Pass Cure. My first pro for past cure is that I love the thriller and horror included elements. I enjoy how they're implemented within Ian's nightmares. The breaking of the wall textures, the flickering lights, the dark and gritty prison, decaying hospital and mansion, the horror included elements are one of the key things that shine in past cure that makes it really good. As it gets darker and darker and more messy and gory as time progresses within Ian's nightmares. Past cure also plays within the horror modes by only giving you a flashlight and making you sneak around and dodge the enemies. It's a pro for me. My next pro is that I enjoyed the powers of Past Cure and how they make you use them. Within Past Cure, you learn that Ian has the ability to alter perception and use his own powers such as astral projection and time stopping powers to his advantage. Ian can astral project around the room and solve puzzles and turn things off or generally see where enemies are. He can also use his time abilities to slow down time, mess with certain items around the room, or generally stasis himself from enemies. The powers in Past Cure are pretty cool to utilize for shooting and solving and it's definitely, definitely a pro for me. My next and last pro is that the puzzles of Pass Cure are generally tough. If you have to critically think for each one, your tempers they will generally stump you for a second. The prison level has a couple of puzzles that made me take a step back for a second after really think outside the box as I had to really read the riddle and make sure the pieces fit. And the same thing happened with the perception levels of when you first learned your powers. Pass Cure's puzzles are a true testament of critical thinking and how well you can solve these and not be stunned by reading and evaluating that should be done repeatedly and repeatedly. It's definitely a pro for me. My first con for Pass Cure is that the graphics for this game aren't that good. The hair looks bad on character models, some character models are repeated constantly throughout the game, the leveling of detailing that you see within cutscenes to real time actually look horrible once the cutscene is over. The skin looks bad, the enemies have missing portions on their faces, graphically this game isn't up to par in real time compared to it when you look at it from the cutscene's perspective. It's missed opportunity and potential. It's definitely, definitely a con for me. My next con for Pass Cure is that the gameplay is clunky and awful. The shooting feels like it wants to be max pain but misses the mark completely. The reticle flies overhead sometimes and completely pops out the way when attempting to shoot someone. The hand to hand combat mechanics are terrible also. You can spam circle forever and get an attempt to get a knockout or a kill but it hardly works sometimes. Or it's even trickier doing the counter command prompt because it only halfway works sometimes. It isn't fun, it isn't good nor did I have a good time dealing with the mechanics of this game. It's a con for me. My next con is that Pass Cure forces an entire stealth mission on you until the last moment of the level. You have to find routes throughout the hotel level of the game and deal with the stealth mechanics either fully working for you or sometimes working for you. I had to constantly repeat this all up because Ian will either let the enemy go mid animation or will bump into them after I press circle. I didn't enjoy myself when it came to this part because the stealth mechanics feel forced on you. It didn't feel natural when you were going through it. It didn't feel like Pass Cure screams stealth missions at all. It's a con for me. My next con for Pass Cure is that the voice acting in this game isn't good. It just isn't good. The guy voice acting Ian tries his best but he feels like he doesn't want to be there sometimes. And the guy voice acting Marcus, your friend who helps you out throughout the game, sounds dull and just reading the script. Sophia, the woman you're chasing, just sounds someone they picked up off the street to read her lines and she didn't get into her character either. And the man with the beard at least someone tries to get into his role at the end and is the only one who sounds semi good throughout. The voice acting in this game is terrible and is a con for me. My next con for Pass Cure is that the story of this game makes no sense that it's more confusing than it is helpful. You learn about Ian having horrible nightmares and seeing this woman in his dreams. However, he learns her name and they're both connected in some kind of way that it isn't explained. It also isn't explained how he knows the man with the beard unless he read a paper in the hospital of that can be easily missed for the average player. It's hinted that Marcus is turncoat but doesn't go into fully detail with it and it isn't explained how Ian gets the bluebird messages or anything. Pass Cure explains nothing almost. It's a con for me. My next con is that this game is a technical mess. I've dealt with getting shot at in the middle of cutscenes that's crashed my game. I dealt with Ian getting stuck in the middle of a boss fight to where I couldn't move that crashed my game. I dealt with killing a boss out of another course on top of another course where it distracted within the cutscene itself. 
I've had my game crash several times in the middle of gunfights. I had enemies kill Sophia in the middle of the last fight during a cutscene. I've had the blurry effect stay on screen after losing my mental powers for a minute. I've had the subtitle speed up faster than the words to catch up with. This game is buggy and horrible. It's a con for me. My next con for Pascal is this game has the worst final boss fight that I've played. The moment it leads into this doesn't make sense. The fact that this boss fight has three phases and ways of you having to deal with enemies crawling out the woodwork and having to use your powers to stop it was more annoying than it was fun. The boss fight was just generally a bad fight. He has powers while you have guns to use, which if you shoot him enough it harms the way you can do a QTE which has no effect, no avail, and doesn't even have sound. The boss fight comes down to a 10 second fist fight that you win in the end. It's a con for me. My next con is that Pascal introduces a brand new power mid-game that you can't even use on enemies outside of the moments that the game wants you to use them. During the hotel scene in Pascal, you can get some new power called Mind Invasion, where you can take control of enemies and see what they're thinking and what they know. Outside of the enemy in the control room and the doctor inside the hotel room, you can't even fully use this power. It gets introduced to you to fully ignore and forget about after it gets introduced. This would have been great during the four stealth moments, but no, you can't even use it at all outside of that. It's a con for me. My last and final con for past career is that the monsters of this game, the ones you have to constantly deal with, aren't explained why the life that a Y E and even sees these all the time. They're just here in a sense. Feel it to just be monsters is that really it. Also the kill animation from these monsters are terrible. They either chop you in the neck or grab you by the head and slam you against the ground and step on your head. Which shouldn't kill you from how they do it, but this game just takes the cake constantly for bad ideas. The monsters don't even get explained why they're invading Ian's mind either. It's definitely a con for me. But all in all, Past Cure is a rushed and terrible game that has seemingly good ideas in mind. Like the horror thriller sections where it gets creepy and decayed like and having a sneak on where you're going and feels silent hill to the evil within. The powers are cool to you to see how Ian manipulates the world around him with time and astral projection. And lastly, the puzzles of this game are genuinely tough and thought provoking which does a good job of those. But this game is rushed and filled with terrible things such as the graphics being bad, clunky shooting mechanics, horrible hand to hand combat, being forced to take on a random stealth mission for an entire level, having to deal with bland and mediocre voice acting, also dealing with a story that isn't pieced together nor tells you anything really, also dealing with a consistent game crashes and other bugs that takes away from the experience, having to put up with a joke of a final boss fight, getting introduced to a new power just to forget about it, and having to deal with these porcelain monsters that you can't even fight back. This game is horrible. But with that being said, I'll be giving Pass Cure a 2. Out of five. All right, guys. Thank you for coming through and watching my review for Past Cure. The written review will be up on TickGN.com following this up as well, so be on the lookout for that. Also, the reviews that's coming up are Dragon Ball Fighters, Monster Hunter World, Shadow of the Colossus Remastered, and I do have some other videos that'll be on the way. Also, from my 2017 Mega Review thread to my best and worst of 2017, to my top five indie games of 2017, and my top five underrated games of 2017. So be on the lookout for those as well. Were you anticipating Past Cure? Were you actually waiting for this game to be good, or were you actually be on the lookout for this game? Tell me how this review changed your mind, if, if this review did change your mind. So be on, tell me in the comment section how you feel about it now. What's coming up next? I already named all what's coming up next, guys, so just be on the lookout for those. Follow me on my Twitch and Twitter links to those will be in the description box below. You can go check out my previous reviews on Life is Strange Before the Storm Episode 3 and Soma. Go check those out. Those are really good reviews. And you can go check out me playing Guardians of the Galaxy Episode 5, finally, if you're waiting on that. So be on, go check that out also. And until next time and until the next video, guys, we'll tune in, turn up, and throw down. I'm out. I thank you guys for watching. Hit that like and subscribe button if you're new to the channel. Hit that like button if you're returning. Hit that like and subscribe. And hit that notification icon to always stay up to date with what I'm doing. It's looking like a GG. And I'm out.